Howdy folks! Dave here again, Chaos Crafting. So this is the uh, episode two of our Castle Gate build. As you see, we've got the structure that we finished off in episode one. What I've done is I've cut out a base, as you can see, and a top stone to go on top of our structure. Now I've sketched out some brickwork and some road stone and I will cut and texture this. A few things that we're going to need for materials. I got some coffee stirrers, skewers, bamboo skewers from the grocery store. These, these are awesome crafting items and it's like a buck for the bag so those are great. And now the skewers I'm going to cut down and use as the door hinges. These are the pegs that are going to go into the floor and into the ceiling of our structure to allow our doors to, to swing. I went to the local crafting store and I got went to their jewelry section. It's a great place to find things for crafting. I have these little circular rings these will make great handles for the door. And carving, texturing on the base and the top are done. We have this open space here. This is going to be the support beam for the hinges. It's going to sit in there just like that. Eventually we will put the two holes that the hinge posts go into, into this. Let's do steady bead of good old tacky glue. Now, again, this is going to take 15, 20 minutes to dry. That's fine, because I, I want to have the ability to put the... Let's see, I get it all over myself. I want to be able to put the hinge on there, and then adjust it so that we have the right amount of post at the top and the bottom. Right, so that there, here... A little bit more glue. No, don't let it fall over like that. I'll prop it up. See, if you're using hot glue, you'd have one shot at getting that on there exactly how you want. All right, I'm going to place these off camera to, to dry. Now, really, the only side that is going to be visible once you've got this assembled is this profile. So here, I take my comb. I'm using the thin, not the wide. And then I kind of give it a single pass, being a little bit curvy, and I press it. Now I know I missed some there. And I don't know how well you can see that. It does come out even after you have coated it in PVA or Mod Podge and painted it. I'm really pleased with how this works. Now again, it's it's rather exaggerated because you know no tree is going to have that kind of pattern but it works for me and it, it it looks good on the table which is what I find important the hinges have dried or the glue has dried and I've uh, put them back together with a piece of painters tape this is to make sure we maintain that uh, distance between the hinges appropriately and what we're gonna do is we're going to mark where the bottom hinges go in and what we're going to 
take is this door and put it flush against the wall. Now we're going to move it back a sixteenth of an inch. If we have it flush, we may run into some problems once we have applied a layer of paint. We want it to be close, but not so close it can't can't open. So here I'm using my pen and I'm marking where those posts are on the bottom. So that they've left a little indent. I could just circle that little indent. Now that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my really sharp X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut out those little holes. That's where these bottom pegs are going to rest into. And just because I have the resource, I've got this 3 16th polystyrene tube that just so happens to fit snugly over that skewer. I have cut four little nubs that I'm going to use to sink into the foam to be part of the hinge. Totally optional. The, I have it available. I might as well. You would be perfectly fine just having the skewer friction held in the foam. You know, when we're assembling, we'll probably paint parts of it independently and let it dry before we put it all together, just so you don't paint your doors in, which is important. This helps with that step. Not necessary, again, optional. Now, we have that together. One thing I'm missing is the fiddly bits to go on the front to give it more interest. It's a visual interest. It's a additional layer of uh, depth to the model. Right now it's just a flat wall.
And the fiddly bits are done. It took a little bit of time. It's quite enjoyable though. As you see, it really makes this wall pop. It gives it additional layer of three-dimensionality, gives it some shadow. As you see, I've also put fiddly bits on the door. Using the coffee stirrers, I have put an edging all the way around. You can make whatever design you want. Take a look at old doors on, on Google. Uh, also, here's that ring that uh, I got from the craft store. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to tape these back together and we're going to set the top hinge point into our support beam. Put the door into your already cut hinge holes. I'm using a scrap piece of foam to push the door out just a little bit from the wall. I will take some paint and put just a little dot on top of each hinge post. And we're going to take the beam we're going to put the beam snug against the wall and push it down on top of those hinges. And we see how the paint now has put on that piece of foam where we're going to cut our top hinge holes. And with that, I consider this project done. Yeah, I, I know we still have to uh, paint and uh, do the final assembly. But really, that, that's going to be a, a video unto itself. That's something I, I'd love to take my time doing, not try to squeeze it in at the end of this one. So far, we've covered uh, some foam carving, basic texturing, both stone and wood, and fiddly bits. We all love fiddly bits. And I really hope that you enjoyed it. I had fun making it. Do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. Well, this has been a Grumpy Dad production. Later.